the driver operator of the first arriving suppression apparatus should spot to supply the FDC. The apparatus should be spotted to allow the driver to supply the FDC with two 3-inch lines. The second due suppression must conduct a water supply evolution to supply the first suppression unless the first unit has already or is in the process of supplying itself. When possible, the supply evolution should not position hose or apparatus in a fashion that blocks access, especially for later arriving aerial apparatus. Set up for a tandem pumping operation when the required pressure is higher than a single pumper is capable of achieving. When dealing with high discharge pressures, relief valve settings may need to be adjusted if they are not set to the standard pressure of 200 PSI. The portable hydrant relief valve can be adjusted with an adjustable wrench or 7 8 inch socket. The Akron ball intake valve can be adjusted with an adjustable wrench or a 7 8 inch socket. The TFT ball intake valve can be adjusted with a quarter inch Allen wrench. The apparatus pump relief valve can be adjusted with an adjustable wrench or a 7 8 inch socket. Discharge pressures should not exceed the operating pressure of the hose. 5 inch hose that is tested at 200 psi has an operating pressure of 185 psi. Hose tested at 225 psi has an operating pressure of 200 psi. The FDC will be supplied by two 3 inch hose lines. Two lines reduce friction loss, providing greater volume and prevent loss of supply should one line burst or be damaged. An FDC that is capped off with a disc can be accessed by breaking the cap with a spanner wrench. Prior to hose connections, the FDC must be inspected for debris and the presence or lack of clappers. Stiff or frozen swivels on the FDC can be overcome by either utilizing double males and females to create your own working swivels, or by twisting the hose several turns counterclockwise prior to inserting the male into the stiff swivel and turning the male coupling clockwise to tighten it. When an FTC cannot be supplied because of damage or inability to locate it, a standpipe system can be supplied by utilizing a first floor outlet, utilizing a 2.5 by 2.5 by 2.5 inch gated Y plus two double females, which will allow you to create your own Siamese. If PRDs are present on the outlets and they are of the non-removable or non-adjustable types, they will limit the ability to pressurize the system with greater than 100 PSI. Churning and overheating of the pump may occur when pumping high pressures with little water movement. Driver operators must constantly monitor their apparatus and deploy a discharge line or other pump cooling procedures as necessary. When fires are above the 30th floor, pressures in excess of 250 PSI will be required at the FDC and the following procedures shall be followed. Secure the hose connected to the FDC with a rope to a substantial anchor. Utilize discharges opposite the pump panel. Utilize seam tape to cordon off the area equal to the length of the hose and enforce this safety and exclusion zone. The apparatus should be positioned close to the hydrant so as to allow hose connections to the hydrant assist utilizing shorter sections of 5 inch hose. The pump should be engaged and drive wheels chalked. A section of 5 inch hose should be connected from the unclappered side discharge on the hydrant assist to the main pump intake. Another 5 inch hose is then connected from the clappered side discharge of the hydrant assist to a large diameter pump discharge. The hydrant assist handle is turned to the boost position to allow water into the hose. Turning the handle in the other direction will result in complete shutoff of the hydrant. Air is bled from this hose line at the ball intake bleeder valve and the intake is open to allow water into the pump. The large diameter discharge valve should be opened next to allow water to pressurize the hose going back towards the hydrant assist. Pressure should be increased to open the clapper valve in the hydrant assist and boost the pressure in the supply line to the desired levels. Care must be taken by monitoring residual intake pressures, minimum 20 PSI, to prevent cavitation of the apparatus boosting the pressure. 